Hey everyone, it's Alan over at Cobblers Plus, and today we're working on a very interesting new brand, I guess somewhat new here in the US, made in the US, called Origin. So they're in fairly good shape, but we need to replace the sole to something a little bit different. So stay tuned for that and uh, check it out and see what these are all about. So join us. Alright everyone, so like I mentioned, we've got these uh, Origin boots here. They're kind of new to the market and everything. I don't have enough details quite yet as far as, you know, when the origin of them really started, in other words. We'll say that way, but uh, they're very interesting build. I've been looking into them a little bit, so if you want, stay tuned till the end. I'll do more research on it to talk it over, but to start it out, we're going to kind of go through what we can visibly see at the moment. I mean, they're great boots. Uh, they don't have a liner here on them so some people don't like that but some do i'm kind of 50 50 on that it just depends on what it is i'm after because sometimes liners get a little too hot in other words when you have it with a nice thick leather like this because this is a fairly thick leather here um, it does have a double tongue it looks like here so that means it's two tongues and uh, that top one from the look of it should be removable Yep, it's removable once you take out the laces and everything, and uh, that's kind of a cool feature. So the inside structure, you might be able to see down in there, I can't quite tell if the, um, right in there you could see at the corners there, there's some stitch work. Uh, that means that the leather midsole right here is Blake stitched onto the boot, in other words, and uh, then also it's got that kind of turn welt or most people know it also has stitched down about halfway through the boot which is kind of weird for me honestly it's cool looking appearance wise structurally i'm not quite sure um but still kind of a really cool feature i like it in a way too um so definitely Definitely a different type of build for sure on these, but we're going to be resoling them. Our goal, as you can tell, they're brand new soles on here pretty much. The person who owns these has only worn them like once or twice, maybe a, a little bit more than that. But they've got so much wear left in it. However, he needs them to be more slip resistant. The compound used on this Vibram Lug sole is very durable and has great traction, but the compound itself is not uh, designed to be a grippy one unfortunately and he needs it to be more grippy for kitchens so we're going to be replacing that for him today so because of that we're not going to be tearing down the boot completely to see internally what's going on sorry i kind of get interrupted there but yeah we're gonna go ahead and first take off the soles i'll undo the laces a little bit here do like the laces here that, they, that he's got PRL TD. Cool. We have to look into those laces. They're like a paracord type. It looks like. Yeah, that is a paracord. Looks like a 550 style paracord with an aglet. I don't know if that comes with the laces. Again, I'm going to have to look into that, but I'll have more details for you. I will do also what's called a cash trash episode, one of the new segments that we have about these boots, as I know more details about it, especially that I'm getting to work on a pair now. And yes, I have this new little stool that I kind of rest my knee on and everything, because standing up all day after a period of time, your legs get kind of a little tired, and I've been using that. But we're going to go ahead and start tearing this down. I have to be very careful not to pull too hard and try to separate that midsole from the upper on these, otherwise that ain't going to be good.
All right, everyone. So as you saw, I've got the sole off and everything. And uh, first things first, we'll mention that I'm really glad that they didn't run any nails in here because usually when a boot or shoe is not broken in yet and it has a brand new sole on it, it's kind of a pain to remove the sole because the adhesive hasn't broken down enough. So it takes a little effort and I don't like using too much solvents usually on a newer boot or sole, but at the back of the heel, I kind of had to just because it's it's a really thick spot removing a sole like this here because of the transition uh, between the sole and the heel the thickness wise you can see that my pliers just barely fit around it sometimes I have to use like two hands to get it to go at first other times I'll switch over to different pliers or uh, worst case scenario I would end up basically cutting off just about right here on the sole and then the heel either try to pull it off separately uh, grind it off or even uh, cut it off using a bandsaw which we have as well so different techniques and methods that we would use so like I would mentioned um, these are Blake stitch so you can see that inner stitch right here all around it's pretty cool that they went all the way around which is not very common with a lot of boots especially and most shoes you don't see it either usually there's just like some uh, nails in the back here but these guys actually did it looks like they start their stitching here go all the way around and then get back over here as well so that's pretty cool actually um, to find the other thing is you can see that stitching there which is on the outside right here for that midsole and that's where that uh, uh, stitch down welt or is technically what it's called I just call it uh, the turn welt or the upper because basically this is the leather upper it comes down and then it turns out like that and then it gets stitched down so turn welt stitch down whatever you call it it's kind of the same thing basically but uh, yeah this is how how it looks underneath from the feel of it underneath they've got a nice shank and everything nice and sturdy I don't think that they have a cork filler of any kind in here I'll have to check their specs honestly and I'll give you guys more details later in the video for now I have to make sure I just get these started but from the feel of it it does not feel like there's really a cork inlay inside they have like this pour on type material which is nice for a cushion but eventually that stuff does have a tendency to break down so I'm gonna go ahead and continue on with breaking down the other one we're gonna go ahead and sand this up a little bit I do have to be very careful with sanding so that I don't end up hitting the stitches now what I do do like to do before the sanding is I use a little bit of a thin super glue type of adhesive and this will have a chemical reaction with the stitches and kind of bind them just as a precaution and reinforces them as well so this is a good thing to have on the stitches before sanding it even though my goal is to try to avoid it so full disclosure when I do start sanding and because I'm trying to avoid the stitches there is going to be a little bit of glue behind in some of the areas just because I'm trying to avoid sanding through them okay so don't be freaking out saying oh there's a little bit of glue it's not harmful it's not Gorilla Glue or anything because then that's a problem Gorilla Glue is bad very bad so is crazy glue okay a little bit of contact cement or super glue those are fine but gorilla glue probably the worst thing we we hate it cobblers really hate that stuff at least good cobblers i've seen some questionable cobblers that have used that in the repairs and uh that's why they're called a questionable cobbler so we'll go ahead and let that cure for just a minute there we go because it has that chemical reaction it's gonna get hot and everything so I'll let that sit and dry for just a little bit and we'll see you back here after sanding i'm not gonna record that because it's a very slow annoying process of trying to avoid all the stitches and and i'll just let you see what the outcome of it looks like as well and i start to grab the sole for it too so we'll see you back in just a minute all right everyone so we've got everything kind of sanded out as you can see now these spots here this is from the factory there's a gap right there you can see um so it's not something i sanded out there were a few light spots you can see just tiny bit that I've nicked but again that's why we do the uh, the adhesive there to reinforce the stitches make sure that they don't come apart structurally it's not going to do any kind of harm to the boots at all usually during the full resole process this whole entire midsole would come off sorry I got interrupted there but uh, yeah these uh, these boots here if we were completely resoling them we'd be replacing this midsole that would all get restitched completely and redone but these are brand new they have practically a mile or two just on them so 
we just need a new tread and I thought it'd be a good boot to do a video on to see what they look like underneath the soles at least structurally these things are are gonna wear very well so I'm gonna go ahead and glue everything up um, and put it all together and we'll go from there Alright everyone, so I wanted to show you guys real quick, so I've got this one sanded up as you can tell right there. It's uh, obviously on the rough sander and everything, so i got to make sure to even it out on the next one. But, let's grab the other boot here. And so, usually we have a little bit of excess around and stuff, so we cut it. So like right here, I used my cutting tool. But, for some of you cobblers out there, I do like to trim up these corners. You can see that it's a little bit beveled right there. So takes out a little bit of a chunk because this usually doesn't fit under any of the cutting um, machines too well, especially when there's not quite enough material, but you know, a little too much. In other words, for some of the other cutters, it's kind of that perfect balance you got to have for each machine or cutting device to get it to cut. So to the cobblers out there, this comes in handy when you just trim up that corner there with either a lip knife or a hook knife really comes in handy for those of you that don't know. Um, this is, a hook knife right there so just go around cut it a little bit around the edges there cut where I need to right here on the thin areas these areas they're a little bit too thick the toe I did cut on the five and one there so just to give you an idea of what happens when we're cutting and then we'll just start sanding because too much material to sand sometimes heats up and then unfortunately the sole can come undone in some areas so let me continue on and uh, we'll move on to the next machine All right, everyone, so I got everything sanded out. Now it's time to go ahead and uh, take care of the edges because they're obviously a little too nude. So I'm using some Saphir Seraphin Cream in a light brown here. Um, yep, light brown number three. I was trying to make sure which number it was for sure. And uh, yeah, we're just applying it on there. Now, if I get it a little bit on that uh, welt there, that's fine. It darkens it back up a little bit, as you can see there, just a tad bit, and then restores the color back to that nude area now if you're wanting to keep it lighter we can definitely use like a neutral or a lighter color as well but we're trying to get these back to original basically so i'm going to use that now a lot of times i'll also use a product called urad in a light brown that they have but unfortunately i am out of stock and uh, it's a little back ordered at the moment but i'll i mean i'll probably end up getting that hopefully soon as far as uh 
what they both do it's about the same the only difference is that ured is a lot easier to apply um, because it's got harder waxes in there and everything and um, the consistency of it is a little bit easier to apply for us in other words this stuff is a little softer it's kind of designed more for the uppers but it works very well for edges as well so if you ever need to touch up your edges or while it's on a pair of shoes or boots that have a light color like that grab a little bit of cream polish and touch it up now there are some areas i'll show you guys real quick that are um from the factory if i come across one actually that have like a light spot because from the factory they kind of didn't finish out the edge on the leather here completely straight it's kind of rounded which is good so if i get to one of these spots probably see a little bit oh there we go that's a good spot right there so just like that i'm applying a coat and you can see that there's still a light spot there and that is from the factory there they kind of had it rounded it's not from me sanding it but either way i'm going to go ahead and touch that up and then take that to the, take these to the buffer after we're done buff them all up a little bit here and there get that wax in these in this cream polish to shine just a little bit it's not supposed to be too shiny it is a cream polish where it's got a stronger pigment in it just gives it that little bit of final touch where it smoothens out the waxes there we go all right i'm gonna give that a few minutes to dry and uh buff it up so we'll see you back here in just a little bit all right everyone so everything's all finished up got them all buffed up a little bit there Nothing too fancy or crazy. Again, we're trying to restore it just like original as much as possible. Um, overall, I mean, this is a very simple job on this one. Now, if we were going to go ahead and do like a full resole on these, obviously we'd be removing that leather strip if we need to. Um, but because these are designed in such a way, there's not much that's gonna go wrong with it. There's almost no need to actually tear off the entire midsole, quite honestly, um, because there's no cork that's gonna disintegrate inside. Um, probably the only case scenario, or only two case scenarios, that you would need to fully recraft these with removing that leather midsole would be as if the shank is snapped inside and we have to get to that, or if uh, we need to replace the leather because it's starting to deteriorate. But basic conditioning and upkeep on these is going to be fairly easy uh, with your conditioner just make sure you get a little bit onto that leather there and you should be fine for quite some time as far as a snap shank or anything like that there isn't going to be it's not going to be an easy thing to do necessarily it's going to be a little tough to do for sure to break those shanks inside here but if we were to do it that way there'd be some hand stitching involved on the welt or the uh, the stitch down welt or turn welt uh, just because we want to make it into the original holes and so that's kind of going to be the case on these overall pretty great boot i still have to do the uh recording at the time of the cash or trash episode i'm definitely going to be posting that probably beforehand but uh, check that out if you want to know details as far as rating on everything how it goes uh, for those of you who are wondering around this sole uh, as you can see this sole doesn't have much heavy traction but the rubber compound on it is extremely grippy uh, this gentleman needs something that's going to do very well in a kitchen like I'd mentioned and so it's going to grip phenomenally because there's a large surface area not as much you know holes where the traction is going to be and so it's going to grip really nicely on the smooth areas also during the sanding process you may have seen that i had to grip it just a little bit tighter because the rubber is so grippy it would launch this out of my hands if i didn't hold it tight enough and we don't want that to happen so there you go that's uh how a pair of these origins are resold on kind of a basic level on a more higher grade level definitely a lot more work goes into it but it's not going to be needed overall long term if you had a pair of these you're not going to need to do too much as far as resoling them unless that midsole absolutely has to come off then it gets up to become whole ordeal on them um uh, that one thing though the foam that they have in there for the footbed that might be a little bit of an issue down the road as well might be something that uh, may have to be torn out and replaced and stuff that may be one of the cases to get that midsole also removed so you can get that foam junk out of there and replace it honestly it is kind of a junk that foam i know i'm familiar with it from an orthopedic standpoint there's not much reinforcement to it and it's gonna start falling apart so um yeah, there you go. Hope you enjoyed this video. Have any questions or comments, leave them down below. 
shorter questions or small questions, but if it's a longer one or more detailed uh, information that you need, check out our website, cobblersplus.com, send us a message on Facebook or Instagram, and uh, it'd be a little bit quicker and easier than even email because our emails just keep getting backed up more and more because of a lot of spam coming through. These spammers that keep sending us stuff, and you probably see them sometimes in the comments, they're driving me insane, I swear. But thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Make sure to subscribe and share the video as well on these uh, Origin boots. They're definitely worth checking out. And check out the video. I'll leave in the, uh, in the link. I'll leave the link in the description down below to the um, uh, Cash or Trash episode and also a link to their site. If it's a referral link, please use that. That'll definitely help us uh, with a little bit of a like a fee that they pay us. It's no uh, no extra cost to you guys, but helps the channel grow. I definitely need to get that new camera as soon as possible for sure. This one's sometimes crapping out on me, honestly. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.